I told Vicky that you would be the ultimate source of history well. for, for this area. <laughs> and well, uh, I told good. her about the little holes in the walls where they would chew through, uh -huh. and those uh -huh. walls are probably that oh, thick. Oh, they're very thick. That's right. That's right. Uh, his and house. It, was, it was actually uh, constructed by my great great grandfather, Blas Maria Uribe. And uh, Gutierrez also, who was also part, part of the founders of the whole San Ignacio. Hi everyone, welcome to the Texas Outdoor Lifestyles. This weekend, you're going to be hanging with us in San Ignacio, Texas. Super cool little town, just about 30 minutes from Laredo. And I'm going to be hunting a big Buck. So let's see if we get one. In the meantime, we're going to get a little history lesson from the famous Judge Mercurio Martinez and his son, Commissioner Merck Martinez. Thanks for hosting us, guys. You have a beautiful ranch. We're going to be staying at the La Selva Ranch, and I'm going to be hunting on the La Trinidad. So I hope you enjoy the little history lesson. A lot of, lot of, lot of history here and um, interesting people. So I hope you enjoy it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. After my dad passed away in 1966, uh, I'm the one that actually replaced it because I was concerned and afraid of, of a fire. Mm -hmm. Even during my years that I would sleep there, it never, you know, they, they, they were so very well, uh, uh, how should I say, intertwined, yeah, or yeah. The, the tight roof, that not one single leak actually wow. dropped in there. That was how good the, 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 the they had done. The construction was back yes, then. Yes, <laughs> back then. Wow. This, this is an, an addition. Okay? Oh, look this at this. I, I, uh, I added this one, but this is this is the original house, okay. And the uh, this this house, this is un tapanco, by the way. You know what a tapanco is? Spanish, no. No, all right, that's an attic, an attic. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. A In tampe, Spanish, a tam ta tapanco. Tapanco, is an tapanco. Attic. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna get a little Spanish all right. lesson today. Okay. <laughs> Come along with us and enjoy the great outdoors in the state of Texas. Texas Outdoor Lifestyle, brought to you by Lone Star National Bank. The city of South Padre Island, Texas. Ron Hoover RV and Marine Center. Mayak Boats. Jim's Pier. Danny's Pawn Shop, Point Blank Sporting Goods, Pro Valley Foods, and Select Properties. Texas Outdoor Lifestyles. It's not just a hobby, it's a lifestyle. Fort is my great great grandfather was the one of the founders. It, a, uh, when you go in there, tiene troneras. You know what a tronera is? No. All right, these are the little holes where you they would put the rifle to defend oh, against Indian okay, attacks. Okay, okay, uh -huh. And uh, over here is uh, at the uh, on the entrance is the uh, sundial. And, uh, and I'll give you a little history there as to how it, that, that uh, sundial came about. He was actually, for better than 20 some odd years, the only individual here in this county that had a degree, certainly a master's degree. He, uh, when he went to uh, Austin, uh, he went to Austin in a mule. And wow. it took him. It took him three weeks to get there. During that time, of course, uh, he only came to San Ignacio to, to his parents only once because, of course, you know, the, the it would it, it it would take 
quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But he went uh, to, to get his education against his father's wishes. Dijo, papá, es, este, el, el, uh, el interés mío es educarme y no andar trabajando este, en la manera que desafortunadamente tiene uno que trabajar. Pero yo me quiero educar. That's my father. He was honored, you know, as the oldest living graduate of St. Edwards at that time. He was 88. This is the mandolin club. My, my father had a great ear for music. So here it is with the mandolin club. Here he is with the orchestra in 1897. Here it is with the sodality. Here it is with the baseball club. That's him. That's the orchestra over there. All of these pictures, St. Edwards didn't have them. And my dad ended up, you know, giving, sending them copies of these different oh, pictures. Oh, really? Yeah. The way they, they would travel and put all of their, their old, you know, things. This is a shaving, all right? And that was your grandfather's? This, your no, mother's? this is my father's. Your father's? My father's. Wow. Okay. All right. So he would, so so he probably took this to yes, Austin right. and back. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? Here with Moises Martinez, uh, he's the owner's son, and he's an Aggie, good guy. I've known him since he was literally born. Uh, now he's almost bigger than I am, almost taller. Uh, I think he is. Time, time, time waits for no man, and I've better seen looking this, too. It, better looking, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but anyway, he says he's going back because uh, he's got female problems in Laredo, so he may not show up tomorrow. But uh, just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that Moises is a great guy. <laughs> Aggie, what happened? Gig him. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little mancha for later. Is that some barbacoa right yeah, there? Is that for, later. It for later, saving it for later. Texas Outdoor Lifestyles. Get, Get you, you some. some. There you go. Don't go away. We'll be right back. with Lone Star National Bank, you're actually investing in your community. You see, our customers have made us one of the largest community banks in Texas, which means we don't ship your money to New York. Instead, we invest in our community. We invest in your future and in thousands of small businesses. Together. We do what the little banks can't and the big banks won't. Lone Star National Bank, the Valley's Bank. Welcome back to Texas Outdoor Lifestyle. So, uh, my father married uh, his first wife, and she died a year later giving childbirth. And unfortunately, the baby died one year later, también, because of pandemic during that time. Then, all right, my father married the second wife who were a sister to this lady. Mm -hmm. and, and she was much older than my father, mm -hmm. that Matia Lupita. She died also, all right? And then my father married my mother, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, that's when I, I was born. My father was 60 years of age. Wow. All right, when I was born and uh, my mother was 42. And then my mother gave birth to my younger, my other sister, who two years later, and she was 44, all right? 
and that's uh, the the wedding over there. I mean, not the wedding, but uh, that the family there. I was uh, 18 years of age I, at the time, and that was my father's holster because my father was uh, involved in politics, mm -hmm. and they put a price on my father's head mm -hmm. <laughs> during during the time on a very very tight election, which my father ended up winning. Wow. And then my father uh, later on ran for county treasurer for the county of Zapata. And that's right here in the middle up there, I am in Arriba. All right, and those, those are elected officials, the Zapata County Commissioner's Court. And when he took over as the county treasurer, they did not keep any books. And my father saw, pero como no hay absolutamente, so he opened up the very first set of books for Zapata County, and they are over there at the very top. That is the very first set of books in 1910. Wow, okay. that's incredible. Because <laughs> like this one is the- All, right. All of that came from the old books. real estate books laws. Hicks, Hicks, Dixon, and Bobbitt. Let's see, let's see what, how real estate was back in the 1800s. <laughs> Is that right, your real estate? Yes! Okay. Look at this. Okay. I'm gonna have to read it. <laughs> I'm sure things have changed since then. Quite a bit. All right, and there was actually a major, major uh, conflict. We, we have our own version of the Hatfields and the McCoys. Okay, it is. It was be, between the Martinez and the Vidari family, mm -hmm. and this was on an old Dolores settlement. Okay, which is one of the original settlement where my my father's father, all right, settled, and where my father actually, all right, also uh, uh, my father's my grandfather was born in the old Dolores settlement. There was a major, major legal fight over 20 years between the Vidauris and the Martinez. And they fought it for over 20 years, okay? They would always find something and they would appeal it all the way up to the state Supreme Court. And it was because of my father's testimony of which this particular picture he used pointing to that stone to divide, I mean, to, to separate the ownership of one piece of property to the other. And my father's testimony was a major reason why it was eventually settled because of the testimony of my father, of which that picture was used to point at that particular uh, sandstone, Mojonera, mm -hmm. to acknowledge who were the owners on one side and who were the owners on the other side. And uh, his name was Proceso. Uh -huh. And all of these were the children of Proceso Martinez, okay? He was, he loved the history of, uh, of the Roman history. Mm -hmm. and, and all of the names are like Mercurius, mm -hmm. Adolphus, mm -hmm. Serafin, 1873, Eudoxio, 1874, Mercurio, 1876, and Mitia Finita, 1878, and the youngest was Mitio Proceso, who was also my, my padrino, 1883. And a number of people that I have had here as guests, they have told me, you have more farm equipment than many museums, and I don't doubt it. Yeah. Okay. What would they normally plant? What was no? What was the you crop? name it. Aquí, cotton, uh, uh, cotton este, cebolla, este, sandía, melón, uh, maíz. All right. Este, and over there on that side, cacahuate, también, believe it or not. Peanuts. Huh? Yeah, peanuts. All right. Wow. My my father's father, my grandfather was was on the on the. Uh, uh, testimony 
a seat, okay? He was giving testimony, mm -hmm. about, again, on land matters and land titles. And the opposing lawyer, all right, asked him a question in English, and of course the interpretation was done, and he answered it, all right? Now this is, I never knew my, my, my grandfather. He, he died in February, I was, I was born in July mm -hmm. on that same year, mm -hmm. all right? But anyway, este, and uh, again, he was a gentleman that was highly, highly respected, mm -hmm. okay? And that the lawyer, now all of this is related to, was related to me, and I still remember it by my father, okay? Who was, and his father was on, on the bench, all right, providing testimony. Anyway, he uh, was, uh, he, he answered the question that was asked by the, by the lawyer. Again, relating to that piece of property, whatever it was. And then he goes on to some other questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he comes back again. Mm -hmm. and ask him exactly the same question. And he answered it exactly the same way he answered it the first go around. Wow. So he wanted to trip him, obviously. Uh -huh, All right? uh -huh. So then he continued on to another question. A third time, the third time he answered, I mean, he asked the, third que the same question a third time. And my grandfather, according to my dad, who was up in years then, he was in his 90s. Mm -hmm. He had a, a un baston, all right? You don't know what a baston is. Oh, there you go asking me that again. <laughs> <laughs> Can everybody tell me what a baston is? <laughs> a cane. A cane. A cane, okay. all right? So he started hitting the cane. Uh -huh. He said, oh, no me entiende, or oh, no me explico. <laughs> Either you do not understand me or you do not, or I'm not explaining myself. Uh -huh. And then the judge, uh, who was the, the presiding uh, in the courtroom, he says, Counselor, the witness has answered you two times exactly. You're trying to trip him, but obviously you have not, you have failed. So you, you better go on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> Sharecroppers. So, okay, so now, all right. I've I've heard about your grandfather. And I've heard about your father. All I right. want to know about you now. <laughs> no, Can I'm, you tell the audience I, a little bit about what Mr. Martinez does? <laughs> Come on, introduce yourself. Uh, okay. Well, I'm. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I got you now. You did. <laughs> It's hard to talk about yourself. I know, that. I know, but you're so interesting. They, well, I've, I've been fortunate. I've been fortunate. Okay, I'm a former Laredo Junior College teacher. I taught. I thought I have my bachelor's and master's degrees. Okay, and I also have postgraduate courses. All right. Uh, I started teaching when I was just at Laredo Junior College. I was just 22 years of age, and I was start. I started teaching uh, business courses. In 66, 67, I got promoted to uh, business manager of Laredo Junior College. And then I got approached by one of the local banks in Laredo, Union National Bank, uh, if I would become a, uh, to work for, for the bank. And I was fortunate enough that they, at that time, they offered me $1,000 a month. I was earning 500. <laughs> <laughs> and you took it. <laughs> and of course, I took I took the job, and I went to work for the Union National Bank as a senior vice president of the Union National Bank. Okay, so I ended up becoming the county judge for 12 years. All right. 12 from, years. From 1991 until 2002. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for having us. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited to be here. Of course, I always say that, but really, really. Thank this you. is an awesome uh, uh, <laughs> branch that you're, you're I've learned, got so much history now. You, you learned a few terms. <laughs> I know, and, and I, got, I got a Spanish lesson. <laughs> so, okay, so what do we have on the agenda for the rest of the day? Well, we're going to go, well, we're going to go to the town of San Ignacio, uh -huh. and uh, there's an old fort there with a sundial clock. Uh -huh. 
Uh, we're gonna tour the museum that's there, and that's where his grandfather was my born. My father, your grandfather. Right, my, father my grandfather was born, was born there. Okay. And it's a uh, cama que da nada más se usaba para dar parto. A, a okay. maternity bed. A maternity oh. bed. So all parto. the kids and were the kids. No. no, no, my father. Your we, father was father. born. Yeah. So your grandfather. My grandfather. Okay. Yeah. In the 1800s. Wow. Born yeah. in uh, 1876. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, let's go have some have some lunch and let's head on over there. Okay. Texas Outdoor Lifestyle. Get, Get you some. <laughs> Beach lovers know it. Fishermen and water lovers know it. Little kids and big kids know it. Sandcastle builders, free spirits, and adventure seekers know it. Everyone who's ever been here knows it. South Padre Island is so fun, so perfect, and most of all, so Padre. Plan your escape at SoPadre.com. Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Donna wants to thank the Valley for making us the largest boat and RV dealer in Texas. More and more people in the Valley are learning that for selection, price, and financing for any credit rating, Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Donna. We sell family fun. Welcome back to Texas Outdoor Lifestyles. But, uh, you can see a little bit right there, I can see. Very little. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a... Well, I don't know, very, very clear day. It's amazing how you can really see the mountains. Wow, that's cool. Uh -huh. Senator Judy Saffarini. Mm -hmm. This uh, John Sharp was the main speaker. He's now the Chancellor of A&M, mm -hmm. good friend, okay. Myself, former County Commissioner, former County Commissioner, former Mayor. He was appointed Assistant uh, by Clinton, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, in Washington, D.C., and he stayed there in Washington, D.C. Wow. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a little bit. I'm so happy. Okay, okay guys. All right. Autograph by... <laughs> Judge Martinez, his cell. <laughs> Thanks again for having us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much, and uh, I, I can't wait to go it. see everything else that you guys have. This is an old customs house, and so there used to be an, a ferry that would that would bring people from Mexico over to this side and this side over to Mexico because on the uh, on the out, uh, other side of the river, you've got a, a little community just like this one. And so the customs house was here. On it's a San Ignacio, San Ignacio. Me Mexico. San Ignacio, Mexico. Right, and so then this was the old, uh, the old customs house. Now we're also looking at the back side of the old fort and they used to fight off the Indians with this with this fort and uh, uh, as protection. If the federal government decides to uh, put a wall uh, along the Rio Grande it's gonna greatly impact this community and uh, a lot of these old structures uh, will be on 
uh, greatly affected. You're going to see a 30-foot bollard wall cutting right through here. Uh, and so we are obviously against uh, putting a wall. We, we do have the river. That's a natural barrier. And, and so we feel that uh, a wall is not needed. Eighteen thirty. Eighteen thirty. There it is. Wow. That's my duty. That's my great great grandfather. Okay, he was uh, the the father to my grandfather's uh, daughter. I mean, wife. Excuse me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of looks like a cross. Yeah. It's, uh, so the arrow, arrow is pointing arrow. to the North Star, North Star. Right. so that that way they know where the yes, sun is exactly. and what time. That's right. Interesting. Uh -huh. Interesting. And that is the sundial. This house was a general mercantile store. Mm -hmm. All right. And Proceso Martinez, as you can see that, my grandfather. Yes. He is recognized, as a matter of fact, in, in San Antonio. He's the uh, man that introduced the steel plow and the gas lamp to this area of South Texas. Wow. Okay, he brought, because he That's had a, cool. a, a general mercantile store. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And he's so, listed in the Texas Cultural Institute in San Antonio. So when you go to that museum in San Antonio, you see his picture. He, yeah. There's his picture prominently displayed, Proceso Martinez. He did this, this, and this, and introduced that, that, and the other to South Texas. This, this is part of the old store. That's my father right there. They had, wow. they had 3D back then. <laughs> what are those? Then? Oh, they're, they're all dough and buck, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Is it from 1915? Oh. Now that, that uh, bed was used only to give birth. That's it. Mm. Okay. It's the, this is the birthing bed. A birthing bed, exactly. All right. well, here I am with my sister. All right. These two and these are all the brothers and sisters to, to these, these four. Mm -hmm. This is Adrian, all right, who was actually born and raised here in Laredo. That came over there too, by the way. Casella, this first cousin, Lauro, all right. I, I was very close to him, by the way, okay. And these are also first cousins, okay. Judge. When the Indians raided, this town, okay, uh -huh. way back, they ended up taking hostage two mm -hmm. of my great great uncles. They were brothers, and uh, they uh, actually uh, they were first cousins of each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. they were still in their teens. Okay, so they ended up taking them off, or hauling them. All right, being kidnapped. All right, and they traveled quite a bit, mm -hmm. going back to their camps. Mm -hmm. Telling the Indian, told them this, agua mucho, lejos nada, meaning that they had to drink quite a bit of water because they're going to go across that area that had absolutely no water, none mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So the Indian, in a manner of speaking, all right, told them to, to those two young teenagers, all right, to make sure that they would drink enough water so that they would be able to go through, all right, and cross it. Well, that night, that Indian, they were all tired. That Indian really went into a very, very deep sleep to the point that they were able to loosen themselves, you know, from, you know, being tied up. Mm -hmm. So then they started on the way back using the North Star as their guide in order to come back, okay? And they would only travel at night using that North Star. Uh, okay. They finally ended up 
and at an old, old ranch out on the mines road in Laredo, which is, happens to be, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, they were, I mean, really, really in bad shape, uh, totally malnourished and all of that. So they ended up sending a message to the families here that the boys had escaped, that the boys were okay. However, they needed to rest and they needed to be brought up to a little better shape, okay? All right, so anyway, when they were finally uh, able to, to be uh, brought back, okay, the, the, the young man that used the North Star, okay, as a guide in order to make it back, Okay, then he looked for a right uh, stone mm -hmm. that he was able to gradually finish it out with, with uh, the numbers, okay, and actually drill the hole right through the middle. And then on a very clear night where, you could, where he could see the North Star and he was able to actually place that dial, all right, mm -hmm. pointing directly to it. Anyway, that's, that's when he actually ended up then placing that sundial. And that sundial had been used in the early 1900s to tell the right time based on that's the sun. That's cool. And it's, and, been there, day, and it's been there since. For, for over 100 years now, or pretty close to it. That's awesome. Afternoon hunt. We had an awesome little history lesson with Judge Mercurio Martinez. It was so much fun in San Ignacio. And uh, right now, afternoon hunt. Let's see what we get. Hopefully, I tag out, so don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Vicki Chrysler Hinojosa with Texas Outdoor Lifestyles, and I want to tell you a little bit about Danny's Pawn Shop and Sporting Goods. Did you know that you could pawn, sell, or even upgrade your guns here? They even have reloading supplies. This isn't your grandpa's pawn shop. They have high-end jewelry, awesome Rolexes that I've bought. They even have a diamond grader on staff. Not only can you find your guns, scopes, accessories, but the staff is very helpful and patient. So come on down to Danny's Pawn Shop, downtown McAllen, and be sure to tell Danny that I said to get you some. luxury boat on the water. Welcome back to Texas Outdoor Lifestyles. Good morning guys. Well, day two of my hunt and Merck, what are we doing today? You see what I have to put up with when I'm hunting, guys? <laughs> and it wasn't the helium. <laughs> okay, so I guess we're going to go back where the corn is. I don't know, or we're not. I don't know, so let's see. I didn't get to tag out yesterday, so let's see if I get to tag out today. And don't go away. We'll be right back.
sniper and they're putting corn out 500 yards away with my trusty Rusty. They think I'm a sniper? Oh wow. I put corn out and I was stepping it off to see how far it is because you're going to ask me how far it is. And I'm at 125 right here from the corn back this way. So we probably got another 100 yards. So if it comes out in the corn, it's in your comfort zone. It's in your range. Okay, what, where's my mark of the there where you stop? There's a tree that I can see uh, with the binoculars that I've got marked. So I'm at 125. Okay, well, you need to tell me which tree that is. Mark went all the way to the end of the road and was dropping corn. <laughs> he thinks I'm a sniper. <laughs> or the mountain lion got him, I don't know. Where did he go? That's crazy. The sun's not in my eyes down here. I was like, Mark thinks I'm a sniper, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's getting corn on the I other road. I thought you were going to get desperate because you didn't shoot anything last <laughs> night. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> no, I'm a very disciplined shooter. I could have shot everything in that road. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> okay, so now, so now we sit and wait. And what they found out was that the deer are spooked by other vehicles, especially one that has a drive top. Mm -hmm. But when the white trucks w would roll by, Go check the gauges. They wouldn't spook. They just kind of they put. They got used to because of all the oil and gas, all the gas rings around. They just got used to all these white trucks coming around, and they would never get shot at or spooked. And so, you can drive one of those white trucks. And it's not going to face any of these deer. Rifle stocking that javelina and shooting him 50 100 yards is not a challenge Walking up there and getting within about 20 yards With that pistol now, it's a fair fight. Are you gonna let me shoot it? Yeah, cuz you're not gonna hit it <laughs> <laughs> You okay, won't hit on. it. You won't hit it. You're gonna choke like a <laughs> You have something to eat Thanks a lot. <laughs> I, I like how you guys have so much confidence in me. You're not gonna hit it. Ain't no way. So you didn't get it? You're not gonna hit it. In fact, if you kill it, I'll gut it.
You got one? You see, I got one. I got one in the leg. Did you see him? No. <laughs> I need to work out. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him dragging his leg over here. But it's too thick. <sighs> <laughs> Are you tired, you know? <laughs> Did you get it? I got him, but I, I got one of them in the leg. Okay. But he ran off, so <sighs> we gotta go find him. <sighs> oh. Okay. Ruben's lucky. <laughs> I doubt if we'll find him. <sighs> I got him in the leg. He was like... <laughs> really? <sighs> okay. On the first or the last shot? Oh shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when I got when they, the two big ones saw me and they ran. And then the little ones are still tumbling. So I was like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be right back. with Lone Star National Bank, you're actually investing in your community. You see, our customers have made us one of the largest community banks in Texas, which means we don't ship your money to New York. Instead, we invest in our community. We invest in your future and in thousands of small businesses. Together. We do what the little banks can't and the big banks won't. Lone Star National Bank, the Valley's Bank. Welcome back to Texas Outdoor Lifestyle. Pointer. 
pretty dear, I think. In one or two years, he's gonna be a beautiful animal. He's real pretty. He's got a big body. But he, he, I think he's borderline. What do you think? Oh, there she is, right there. Oh. There she goes. Good eye. She's just standing there. There she goes. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. Four.
Howdy. What's up, Vicky Lynn? What are you doing? Vicky Lynn. What are, you, what are you losers doing in here? <laughs> we're, we're waiting for you. <laughs> They're here. Signs of the box here. I got good camera right now. We got another five minutes. If he comes out, I think he's gonna come out right there by the by the brush. Right down the road. Beach lovers know it. Fishermen and water lovers know it. Little kids and big kids know it. Sandcastle builders, free spirits, and adventure seekers know it. Everyone who's ever been here knows it. South Padre Island is so fun, so perfect, and most of all, so Padre. Plan your escape at SoPadre.com. Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Donna wants to thank the Valley for making us the largest boat and RV dealer in Texas. More and more people in the Valley are learning that for selection, price, and financing for any credit rating, Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Donna. We sell family fun. stalking him for what two days at least so he just kept coming back coming back coming back I let the smaller one go he's a little bit bigger but um, I'm happy with him so let's let him lay a little bit and let's go see my buck get you some <laughs> You didn't let them finish the corn? He wasn't even <laughs> eating the damn corn. They were running after corn here. They were running after that <laughs> dough that was in heat. <sighs> there is a lot of corn, it's the yellow brick road. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get lost. <laughs> there he is right there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, what was he what? doing? <laughs> <laughs> he was running after a doe that was in heat. And there was another buck. And we were like, which one, which one? We couldn't figure out which one. And when this one stopped, it was like, okay, let's do this one. Um, 
but man, he did not want to go down. He was a fighter. He came out at about nine, going back and forth, in and out. That doe was running, and um, I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's take him. So. You happy with him, Vicky Lynn? Yes! Beautiful he's super deer. pretty, a lot of character. Look at this. He has a broken horn. He's been fighting. He has another broken horn here. So um, he's a fighter, man. That's what I like. I like my men's fighters. <laughs> <laughs> awesome deer, oh, Vicky Lynn. I know. <laughs> Congratulations. So, I can't wait to put this baby on my wall. Let's go get him processed and um, feed some needy families. So uh, what do we say, Mark, always until uh, next time? Go get yourself. Get yourself. <laughs> <Stay up. laughs>